We're here in celebration of the 100th anniversary of First Baptist Church of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and we're speaking with... Clay. And Lane Camper. Hello there. How are you doing today? Fine, thank Good. you. Um, when did you uh, first become a member of First Baptist Church of Santa Fe? In May, May 2014. Uh, what influenced you to become members? We looked around uh, a lot of places, and then... Uh, ultimately decided on First Baptist after uh, getting invited to lunch and I guess and then also <laughs> wanting somewhere that was good for our family somewhere that our kids had an opportunity to be involved in and that uh, had other young families and then ultimately after coming here long enough decided to kind of make the move to full membership and I know you had some I was going to say I would say it differently but we visited a lot of churches we aren't necessarily baptist or any um, anything like that it doesn't matter to us as long as the word of god is preached and so we tried a whole bunch of different non-denominational or denominational um, churches and when we walked in here i remember joan lemon took the time to get to know our names and then she walked us over to alicia ellingson and ben ellingson and introduced us there because they had kids similar age to Ansley, our daughter, and they made a point of getting to know us during the offertory interaction and then invited us to lunch, as Clay said, and, and you know, really prayed about it but felt like this is where God had for us to be. It was just a much different encounter than we had at some of the other churches we looked at. Who was that that invited you to lunch? Well, originally it was the, El the Ellingsons, but a lot of times the young families kind of go out to lunch uh, together post-church. And so it was uh, kind of everyone just being friendly and asking us to join along with them for so a couple weeks. So multiple families. Which, yeah, so multiple families. And, and that made a big, I'd say that made a big impact because that didn't happen elsewhere. And so. so can you tell me what organizations or groups you've been involved with here? You want to go first? Sure. All right, so uh, so I, I help with uh, sound on Sunday mornings, and then uh, Awana, uh, which is the kids' uh, Awana program, uh, game director there, along with Lane, and then also uh, run basketball on Monday nights. Um, I am the games director in Awana with Clay, and we're a part of the Young Families Connection group and then I also help with sound and or well uh, I do projection. projection he does sound but um, putting up the words every Sunday morning so so you contribute contribute in a very significant way uh, to a Sunday morning worship service then uh, would you describe a little bit more of what you do sure uh, so so sound uh, sounds pretty basic we, we work with the soundboard in the back and it's just making sure and helping out uh, to make sure everyone's mics are turned on, uh, turn on the band when they're supposed to be on, adjust volumes, uh, if things start squeaking, try to find out the source of it. <laughs> and so it's, it's actually, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple once, uh, once you get a handle, handle on it. Um, so. And then projection, like I said, we put up the words to the songs and the sermon, and then any offertory video or slideshow that's run by us in the computer. Although you haven't been here for very long, how do you see God's purpose fulfilled in First Baptist Church in the last 100 years? <laughs> um, you know, I think that, that Jesus said, let the little co children come to me, and I think that this church, uh, you know, sometimes we struggle with our children's ministry, but I think that with Without us, without what the church is doing, you know, there wouldn't be a harvest party. There wouldn't be a WANA. I think we are the only one in Santa Fe. And so we have a lot of kids that really have nothing else to do with our church except for they come to a WANA every week and they hear about God each and every week. And we do the VBS in the um, early summer that there'd be one less opportunity for kids to hear the gospel because it's, imp it's important that 
kids hear the gospel. That's when they're most likely to be open to what God is calling them to do and, and hopefully live their life for Christ. Yeah, I would echo that. I think, you know, obviously we have kids five and two, so <laughs> uh, obviously, I guess it's a video. <laughs> we have kids five and two, so that's where our heads are at. And so things like VBS and Awana are, are big to us. What is your vision for the church for the immediate future? I know, I, you know, in an ideal world, I think, you know, again, biased as a young family, I think we, we would love to see more young families come and participate in the church and find a home here and find Christ if they haven't already and get their kids involved in those activities and in the normal Sunday schools uh, available here to the church. And so I think, I think we have a... I mean, we have all the necessary facilities and all the, the, the things set up. I think now uh, we just need to put in the work and hopefully, hopefully, be a, a very vibrant, um, a, a vibrant church full of uh, welcoming, welcoming young adults and young families. It would be ideal for us. <laughs> yeah, just similar. And what? Um, and kind of expanding on that a little bit. What are your hopes for First Baptist Church for the next 100 years? I think we want the church to to find a vision that God has given us in our transition that we're going through now. That's been my prayer, that he will give us his vision, because I know he has a plan and a purpose for this church. And if we can find that and follow it, then I think we'll be doing what we're supposed to for the next 100 years. Clay, Lane, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you.